Yeah. Um, so I had a similar relationship when I was a teenager with an older man and, um, at the time didn't feel like a victim about it. And, um, thought that I had a lot of agency in the relationship. And um, after it ended, I had a lot of guilt about it, and um, but sort of like pushed those feelings away and didn't really think about it. Um, and then years later, I uh, met women from a fundamentalist community in uh, Oklahoma and spent time with them and, you know, learned that um, they were part of a patriarchal church and they believed that it was the woman's uh, job to not lead a man into temptation um, and basically they were taught to like be ashamed of their sexual desires and you know my I, I just realized how much we had in common actually like in terms of like you know I think it's a universal experience for women um, to experience sexual shame and to seek approval in men you know for self-worth and so it was a it was a critical turning point for me in terms of like how I reckoned with my relationship. It made me reflect on like the guilt that I had had and I in ways that I had never thought about before. Um, so yeah, I, I think because it was so meaningful for me, I decided I wanted to make a film, um, you know, looking at my experiences and, and setting it in this world that, you know, it, like I've said before, it's extreme, but you know, there, there's so much commonality with like, you know, larger mainstream culture, just in terms of patriarchal, patriarchal attitudes. Um, and yeah, the, the script is really beautiful. Um, and I thought it was such a interesting, complicated, uh, story about a young woman coming of age, but also uh, of a young woman, choosing her own path. Um, so I connected with that, but I also connected with it as someone who uh, was very devout until I was 16 and met somebody that I absolutely, I mean, I fell for this guy so hard. It was unreal. <laughs> I still remember like a slow-mo motion of like carrying my Radiohead poster past him as I was walking into school and being like, oh my God, was that did you want him to see that you were ca carrying radiohead poster i mean of course i did it was an okay computer poster uh, but one of the things that really was like the first kind of big cut in my faith was him you know me trying to witness to him because that's what i'd been taught and him saying do you do you think i'm going to hell and it was just this first like big chink and uh 10 year process of eventually leaving the church that I was in and, and kind of realizing I, I didn't believe in those things. But, um, I, I think I really empathize with Jim's journey and, and questioning and wondering like, what does this mean? What do I believe? So that was, that was a big thing for me. The script was brilliant and so tight and succinct and every beat in the script was, it just felt very full um, and you could tell that Laurel had thought about it for a really long time and there was a delicacy to the way she approached the complicated subject matter. I think for me what drew me to the role was the shame that Jem felt about expressing her desires and I didn't grow up religious but I think that every woman has felt at some point that shame and I distinctly remember becoming well moving on moving from childhood to adulthood and becoming a teenager realizing that it was out of my control that I was going to become an object of desire as a woman it was just like and I felt I was so I felt so angry about it and I I don't know, when I was that young, I didn't really, like, I didn't pursue relationships because I just felt quite, I kind of closed off from it because I was so angry that it was out of my control. Sure. Um, but that that's, I think, the main thing, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, much, much like everyone has said, the script was really airtight and um, it was quite frightening, the prospect of, of trying to sit into Owen's shoes step into them rather um and uh, <laughs> i like to sit on my shoes i don't know what you guys do with yours um but um no and then after meeting with laurel it was like very in clear that 
I mean, it was it was baffling that it was going to be her first movie because, it, yeah, it was like she had been preparing for this for so damn long. There was no questions that she couldn't answer. And what was really, I think, incredibly exciting was that she was so intent on making sure that we rode that high wire act of, of it's almost like um, operation, right? You don't want to, like, lean too far in the in one direction. B, the other direction, B. It's like you want to stay in that liminal space, right? Because the audience members are much more likely to maybe see themselves in in one of the characters if it's not so leaning in too far in one direction or the other. And I think that a movie like that can, can have a greater impact. I, I was really, again, blown away by Laurel's writing. It's just so apparent as, you, as soon as you start. Also, I saw a couple of her shorts in her eye. Again, you could not deny it. Um, and then with, specifically with the script, I just, I, uh, I, I felt kind of immediately protective of Jim uh, and I could really relate to her. And, um, and I was really excited by being like uh, the vessel of connection of, uh, it's kind of like Paul's been putting himself into, there's, there's square pumpkins, right? There's these square pumpkins. And, and so people make these beautifully crafted boxes. And since the, the pumpkin's small, they just they put it in there and then it grows. And it's this beautiful square. It's beautiful, it's an accomplishment. Mm. But not for the pumpkin, you know? And so it, 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 it's just like, Paul's kind of like, yeah, babe, it's just, this is great. Trust me, just keep, keep going like this. And I, I promise you. You will be enlightened and at peace. Uh, yeah, and it was just, she just wrote it in such a beautiful way. That's a great way. visual analogy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's something that um, was always the intent from the very beginning of not making a film that was like condemning of faith. I mean, it, the film really isn't a questioning of faith. Like, Jem ha has a relationship with God throughout the whole film. And if anything, it like deepens over the course of the film, right? Because like by the end of it, like, you have your own connection with God versus like yeah. what the community tells you it should be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I mean, just in terms of like cinematography and, and production design and locations and, and editing and casting, like it was all with in mind of like painting a picture of the world of this world that is complex and, and has beauty. Like, you know, we don't want to lean into the oppression. That's boring. We've seen that. And it's like, we get it. Yes, it's oppressive. We can, we know, but like there are wonderful things too. And there are wonderful things about the Christian faith and about a tight knit community. And so we wanted to paint a, you know, a more cohesive, larger picture. Yeah.